Welcome to Our Savior Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Justin Johnson. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, your, your coffee's a little low service, so we're all set. We're going to start with our confession and forgiveness. Um, let's, we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life things that do not exist. Watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand. And so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, hearts and right spirits, that we may find and dwell in your house forever. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is free and an abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our opening song, which is number 779.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water all from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives in the Spirit, one God, now and We'll say Psalm 95 responsibly. Come, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Hard are the pasture of ours, as the America as on that day in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years I loathe that generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. Today's Gospel reading will be chapter, beginning at verse 5, if you wanted to turn to that in your Bibles. Jesus came to a Samaritan city, near the plot of the ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, by his journey was sitting by the well. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, go to the city to buy food. How is it that you, a Jewish man, ask a drink of Jewish people do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered God, And who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestors? And with his sons and his flocks drank from it? He said to her, Everyone who drinks of this, but those who drink of the water that I will give to them, the water that I will give will, be, it will become gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty. Or have to keep coming here to draw water. Then and come back. I have no husband. I can say I have no husband. For you have had, had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. You are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, you will worship what you do not know, we worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jewish people. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah, when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Sir, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, speaking with the woman. But no one said, why are you speaking with her? When the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, she said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? 
Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, I will of him who sent me, and to complain four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around, and see how the fields are ripe for harvest already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One so I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor, other labor. Many because of this woman's testimony, he told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two more days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves truly the Savior of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Also you. Um, so, you may not know this. But I'm kind of a heavy reader. I read one or two books throughout the year. And one of my favorite things to do is to see if authors put a character into the narrative, which is the voice of us, the reader. And I often uh, enjoy the Gospel of John for that sake. He likes to put in a, a character, or one of the disciples usually, who's going to ask a question that we as the reader are thinking about. And I'm saying this because we have this narrative with the woman at the well. And throughout the time, there's been a theological discussion about whether or not and who this, per this woman is. You see, there's kind of two strands. One is, this woman is one way of reputation. Here she is at noontime, when women would have gathered water early in the day rather than late in the day. She's by herself, and women, women would have traveled in a pack rather than go off by themselves. And here she has this statement. I, or Jesus tells her, you have had five husbands. And so some theologians have come out and said, well, this is a woman with a reputation. She's been, now here she is at the well facing Jesus. And Jesus offers this woman with a reputation the water of life. The other route is kind of more modern. And it's looking at the idea of divorce. You see, women had no power for divorce. So often they were just dismissed by their husbands, or if their husband died, that's how they became divorced. But usually they were passed on to a brother or an uncle or another relative. And so looking at the, I have had five husbands, the other kind of path is, is she a woman who has been passed from one person to another to another, who is completely powerless? and has been through life, so to speak. So much so that she's now at this well by herself because nobody wants to be her friend because this has been her life. And so you have these two very different paths. But to me, here walks the disciples who are saying, why is he talking to that woman? And I said, I think they're our voice. Because whichever path you're taking, you're trying to figure out who this woman is. And the whole point is, it doesn't matter who she is. 
It doesn't matter her past. It doesn't matter anything what she's been through in life. I mean, it matters to her, but to Jesus, it doesn't matter. Here is a woman who is not friendly with the Jewish people because she's a Samaritan. And Jesus extends the very thing that was supposedly only for the Jewish people and extends it to this woman. And the disciples are absolutely shocked about this. How could he do this? This was mine. But I kind of like this idea that this woman, we don't know what her past is. Because there are times that we want to compare ourselves to this woman as well. Are we less sinful than her? Or is she more holy than we are? And that's why we want to know who she is. Because we, we have this temptation to compare ourselves to other people, to gauge what, how sinfulness we are, and whether or not we're going to make it into the kingdom. And the whole point of this text, the whole thing is, here is the water of life. Whether you think yourself the most sinful person, whether you think yourself the holiest person, this water of life is yours. Drink deeply from it. Be invigorated by it. Be filled by it. This is for you. And he goes on with this whole uh, dialogue to the disciples talking about this. This is, this is why we're coming together. It's not about filling our bellies. It's not about uh, being off to the side, holding our own thing in, in the age of the coronavirus where we're self-hiding ourselves. This is about extending it all to everybody. This is the beauty of this gospel message. And this woman becomes the very evangelist that Jesus has been waiting for. She can't contain it. She tells the whole town, I don't know what it is, but this is the one we've been waiting for. So much so that the whole town comes and hears. And what's sad is she gets dismissed. It's no longer why we listen to you. Now we believe for ourselves. But it was all because of her testimony. And for that, we're grateful. Because this is Jesus who is extending beyond just the Jewish people into the Samaritans. And Jesus who is extending from me to you to anybody else that wants this water of life, it's yours. And that's the beauty of this gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a hymn. It's number 712. And if you don't have a hymnal, just sit back and listen, and it'll be a beautiful song.
faith the faith in which we baptize, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of living water, send your church beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May its witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. God of living water, protect from pollution or misuse all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams. Bless the work of those who dig wells and those who advocate for access to clean water, that all people and animals have enough to drink. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, open the hearts of leaders and authorities that they hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion toward them. Bring peace to the dis disputed lands and bring reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, or nationality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. God of living water, Mend the hearts of those who grieve broken relationships, whether by conflict, abuse, divorce, or death. Draw near to all who are ill. We pray especially at this time for those that do have the coronavirus, those that are scared, those that are doctors and nurses caring for all. Assure those questioning your presence in the midst of doubt or suffering. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, renew us in the promise of baptism. Join us together in worship, fellowship, and sharing your good news. Embolden us to serve others and to work for justice and peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give them peace as we live in the hope of salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For what else do we pray today? We continue to pray for those who have and are battling cancer, for those that are just returned from the hospital, for those that have now returned from trips far away. As we prayed earlier, for those that are scared right now, for those that are wondering, may there be peace in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to say it anyway. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. There's about uh, four people here today who are our choir, who are helping. Um, so I'm going to even extend, uh, are there places of joy or places that you saw God this week that you'd like to share? If you're watching along, you can uh, type it into our Facebook feed and share those places of joy or anything. I do This is also usually a response. <laughs> so, but uh, for me, it was um, one of our members had been hospitalized, 
uh, uh, I'm not going to say her name because I didn't get permission, but she is home now, and I got to bring her home yesterday, and it, it's, it's joyful, and I am so happy for it, and uh, that, that was my joy this week, so. Thank God. Let us stand for the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm.